And during the 50s, what impressed me about the evolution of the collie breedings is that we went through a period that was very interesting. The standard was raised two inches around 1949. And that came to roost in 1995 when I was back in England at the London Collie Club and at their specialty. And they were berating me for changing their standard. And, uh, but it made a big difference in the dogs. They told me when I came back and forth in the country and I go to a dog show, uh, they told me, well, the reason we raised the standard is for temperament. And that was where Parader was coming into its strongest point. But we also, we, they went from moderate size to big, long, leggy ones. It's very interesting how the breeding evolves. We go from small to large. And in fact, right now, we're about to uh, evolve to large again. It's quite, quite interesting to see that every 10 to 15 years, the collie changes shape, size, People focus on muzzles, and then we get more muzzle, we get more bone, we get getting into the common part. And this is one of, one of the things about moving all over the country and in and out of the country that really I find fascinating, and that's the role of the genes. And uh, uh, the, the, the 50s seem in my memory to have a tendency to common. And then we got into Cobby. I remember si sitting at the ringside very quietly because I'm basically kind of shy and not talking to people, just looking at the dogs and listening. And this very well-known breeder came up with a young dog and said, look how Cobby he is. And I thought, oh, well, I don't know what that's a happy thought, <laughs> but I didn't say anything. And then in the, in the 70s, going to the West Coast, they were pretty tall and rangy. And then they started modifying. And uh, then we went through a period of the small colony. And a couple of the judges were asking me, and, the, and now I'm fast forwarding to the fifth, to the 90 saying what's happening to the collies they're so small the thing is all those small genes are in the dogs and depending on the selection they come back and they, it's just so fascinating uh there was a breeder back in the early 40s that was in the catskills uh near tokel not too far from the tokel and his name was james michelle and he was breeding Faverdale Collies. They were 18, 19, 20 inch Collies. Now the interesting thing, and I'm jumping around a little bit because it does kind of fit, that um, Dot Girth told me when she was judging a brother and sister that I had at Arrow Hill and k Sound breeding, she said, Jeff, I like the profile of your bitch so much better than your dog. And I thought to myself, oh, Dot, I will remember this. If I am ever a judge, I will remember this. Because the degree of fault in both of them were like cookie cutters. It's just one was bigger. And it's easier to win with a smaller dog a more refined dog because the degree of fault is not as apparent or offensive. And I thought to myself, I should remember that. And I'm very careful about that, about not penalizing the larger dog simply because you can see more of that fault. And uh, people teach you so much. And sometimes they teach you something that you didn't expect to learn. And life is learning. And I think that's something we can all learn from. I, I have a thought. And that is, uh, it's so much fun to win. 
winning is absolutely a joy, of course. But you really learn when you lose. And there's one thing, so many, and I have a lot of experience losing. I did a lot of winning. <laughs> <laughs> and when I really thought, I had, I'd always look at the competition and think, hmm, uh, not today. But then I look and think, well, maybe we have a shot today. And uh, then old Shep wins. So I stop, and I stop at a shopping center, and I go take my dog and look at its reflection. If I can get out of my head, I can see what other people see in the dog. If I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it through my bias. I'm looking at what I like. And maybe I'm saying, well, yeah, not so good. You know, no. But I always make a point of taking that dog out of my head, and I can only do it by reflection or having somebody take it away. But even that doesn't work. The reflection helps me better.